Well, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Good mid-afternoon if you're closer to the west coast. Good middle of the night if you're way east of me, because I know we have a lot of viewers over there. I hope everybody is having a swell time tonight. Hang on one second. I got one person just sent me, a, I think, a Facebook message. I was like, how do I get the live stream? How do I get the live stream? It's on YouTube. Every week at the same time. So, uh, this has been pretty fun. This last few weeks, uh, or the last few days of doing a video every day. I So, I will tell you. Um, I like watching car videos because I'm actually a car nut. And so... Does somebody have to do the lawn work like right now? Never fails, right? Okay, so um, I uh, I love I love car stuff, and so <laughs> I watch Cletus McFarlane like pretty religiously. And a couple weeks ago, he made a video on his second channel, and he's like, "I think I'm going to try to do a video every day." Um, and uh, so. I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna do it. Um, so that's what I'm doing. A video every day this month. When this video first, when this channel first came out, I did one every day, and it was really demanding, but it was really fun. And this was like five years ago. But uh, anyway, it was really fun. So we got a lot to talk about today. We have, if if you're new to the channel, um, we do normally a normal month. We do a guitar tone related video every Monday, and we do a live uh, Q and A. Um, every Thursday afternoon at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, we're going to talk about maybe some concepts for some other stuff a little bit later um, that I'd like to get your input on. But that's that's the gist of it. So the way you get your questions answered, you can do them in the feed right here. Ch but when this really gets going, chances are I won't be able to keep up with it. Uh, so you could either use a super chat in the feed or um, you can go to patreon.com slash Dylan Talks Tone and you can ask over there. That is, and then we make sure that we don't miss. I see this question really quick though and I will answer it. I know you love motorcycles too. What are your favorites? Uh, Ducati, Ducati, Ducati. All the way. Um, in uh, dirt stuff, I'm a Yamaha guy. Okay, so... Um, Let's go over to our Patreon feed and get straight into these questions because there is some very in-depth ones. Um, and then uh, we're going to talk about the giveaway guitar in a few minutes. We're going to talk about some super awesome plans for a collaboration with another YouTube channel this summer. I have a bunch of stuff to tell you. Amazing, amazing stuff. So just hang in there for a few minutes, but we'll get these questions answered first. Uh, Tyler says, there's a lot of argument over what alters the tone slash volume of acoustic guitars at the bridge. It's obvious that a lower saddle will usually mean less volume, but some argue that it's downward pressure from the strings on the saddle, and some argue that it's height of the strings above the soundboard at the bridge. Is there any evidence to support either theory? <clears throat> so, one of the mechanics. I'm not a huge acoustic expert, okay? I, I'm just going to say that. I don't I know what I like. I understand how they work, but I'm not a huge acoustic expert. Um, but what I will say is this is just like anything else. The mechanics of the thing matter. So what I'm saying by that is downward pressure on the saddle matters. Breakover angle matters. Scale length matters, string tension matters. All of those things matter, and clean matters more than anything. So um, the experience that I do have messing with my own acoustic, you know, I have that Breedlove uh, Premier Dreadnought right now. I'm trying to sell it, but I have it right now. Um, the thing with that guitar is when I, I, I made a couple saddles for it, 
and I made the action so low that it just completely killed the tone. And I'm gonna say on that guitar especially that it was breakover angle and downward pressure on the saddle because that particular guitar does not have pins in the bridge. Uh, it, they come through the back. It's almost like a top-loaded Telecaster style of mounting, if that makes sense. And so when you lose that downward pressure from making the saddle really super low in the guitar, it really it killed the tone for me. Um, that and string tension. I went from 13s to 12s, completely killed the tone. I ended up redoing the saddle and going up like one millimeter on all of the string heights. So it's not high, but it's not really, really low. And I went to 13s and the guitar is amazing, which is the way it came. So I should have just left it, but you know, we're tinkering and we're learning and we're figuring it out. So all of that does matter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Tyler also asks a good question. With stainless steel frets becoming more commonplace, is it possible that standard strings may wear quicker due to the fret material being so much harder than, than the string? Uh, this is a great question that I think it, it's a good question because people ask it a lot and it makes a lot of sense to ask this question. Here's the thing. Um, why does it matter? Because you don't want your frets to wear. You can buy new strings for five bucks a set, but it costs 300 bucks to get your frets redone. So, although I am not a huge fan of stainless frets, only because I don't like to work on them, I think they're a pain to work on because they're so hard. But for wearability, and if the guitar is set up really good, it doesn't matter what it does to the strings, simply because you just buy new strings. Um, you just buy new strings. It's either something's going to wear, so make the thing that costs five dollars wear instead of the thing that costs three hundred dollars you know what i mean yeah uh let's see i'm gonna leave this question for a little bit later because we're going to talk our main topic is about uh pickups and the cost and because it came up on a facebook thread today that i thought was very interesting and then somebody actually asked more about it on patreon so he's got a question about that we're going to leave that one for a minute uh, following up on last Monday's video, could you please drill deeper into the whole topic of cleaning up the tone by rolling back the volume? A basic understanding of how tube amps work would suggest that, the, that, that what cleans up the tone is the reduction in the strength of the guitar's output signal hitting the preamp tubes, but then your test showed that the volume pot alone doesn't suffice. So how exactly does it play into it how does why would a good pickup clean up and a cheap pickup not clean up um i want to do a whole video on this but the short answer and the shortest i guess simplest answer would be it because it's how the pickup makes the signal and a cheap pickup and we'll get into this actually with our cheap versus expensive pickup thing how the pickup makes the sing signal affects how it acts with the amp. So you have a magnet and you have a coil. You can have a really good coil and a really cheap magnet, or you could have a really good magnet and a really cheap coil, or you could have really good both, or you could have cheap both. And depending on how that pickup and where that pickup makes inductance um, will affect that. I mean, that's that's really what it comes down to. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, let's see. Carlos wants to know, um, what are your thoughts on dummy coils for noise reduction on single coils? Supposedly, it reduces high frequencies. Why? But it looks like a pretty ingenious solution if one is obsessed with noise floor. I play a very quiet ambient music, and I only want hums uh that i can add and have control over okay so this is a great question too so um we could just take a, a dummy coil like we could just wind a coil like this right and we could put it in the circuit and it would uh remove hum it would remove noise but how does a humbucker work 
Humboker works by taking, let's get the right ones here. Okay. Humboker works by taking one coil, the other coil, and a magnet in between it or underneath it that the magnet is uh, one polarity on this side, one polarity on this side. The signal comes in through this coil, goes out through this coil, goes in through this coil, and out through this coil. There's more going to be on this on tomorrow's video, um, uh, tomorrow's vlog video. We go really in depth to this. When this happens, to rem it removes that 60 hertz, right? The thing is, is that it takes some signal with it that you would initially want there. So if, if you were to say, I mean, it's literally just like, I mean, you're skimming it off the top and you're skimming it off the bottom of more or less, kind of, of not really, but sort of, of a certain section of that sine wave. You're, you're literally stripping a certain section of that sine wave out. And there is going to be signal that you want in there that gets taken with it. It's just the nature of the beast. So if you use a dummy coil, it's going to do the same thing. It just kind of how it works. It just kind of happens. Really interesting one. Um, let's see. Carlos had another question too. He said he thinks he got this one missed. Sometimes if people ask a question like right at the last second, sometimes I don't get it. So I, we think this is what happened. So I apologize for missing this before. Um, do, 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 do. Here we go. What are your thoughts on lipstick pickups? They definitely have a unique sound or are at least marketed that way. But what's going on there? Isn't it sort of like a single coil humbucker? Um, bar magnet with a coil and a metal cover. Okay, so we did a video, a really in-depth video on this um, about two months, three months ago, two or three months ago of what lipsticks are, pulled one all apart, showed what's inside, put it all back together. But I'll just give you a little hint. Um, modern ones, this right here is a Firebird pickup, like a Firebird humbucker, uh, like a mini humbucker bobbin. This is what's inside that tube. And you're exactly right. There's a bar magnet that goes right in between here. Usually Alnico 4, I make them with Alnico 5. Um, and then it goes inside that tube and it gets bolted into the guitar. So it, you're, you are correct in saying that it is a mini humbucker bobbin, uh, but you can wind them a bunch of different ways and, you know, stuff. So you, you don't have to be bound to a certain, to a certain way. You know what I mean? Oh, by the way, uh, drink of the evening is, uh, Avion tequila, Avion Reposado tequila. This stuff is really good. So, um, a couple other questions, and I was going to put this in the vlog, and for some reason, the clip didn't record audio. I don't know what happened, but somebody asked me, on our humbuckers, on our mini humbuckers, when we use the bar like this, can you use them with a Fender Space guitar? And the answer, when using a caliper, is yes, because we have 54 millimeters of available string spacing above the magnet. So you can put one of our Firebird humbuckers in a Fender spaced guitar in the bridge position and it will still be wide enough. Uh, somebody asked that last week and I wanted to address that real quickly and tell you that that could happen. Uh, we've got, we made uh, yesterday, I guess you'll, will you see this tomorrow? Yeah, I guess you'll see this tomorrow um, in our daily videos. A uh, pair of center punches that are going out to a client. Uh, I'm going to send them out tomorrow. Uh, this is a smooth cue that's going out to a client. We're sending that tomorrow. This is the neck pickup for the 40,000 subscriber giveaway guitar. Uh, make sure you go to dylancontest.com and enter to win that. Make sure you're a subscriber and you might win that guitar. And it's going to have this pickup in the neck position. I made it yesterday. So that is really cool too. Um, let's see. 
Is that an RC car? Ah, uh, <laughs> okay. So let's get into this. I'm going <laughs> to, this is funny. Is that the RC car for your race against Texas Toast Belt Sander? <laughs> you, sir, probably should get a gold star for paying attention. I mean, sometimes I make videos and I'll be like, this is how you sharpen a pencil. And somebody in the comments will be like, how do you sharpen a pencil? And I'm like, watch the video again. And then there's guys like you who like, I say something in passing on somebody else's YouTube channel. <laughs> and you pick up on it. So before we get into the RC car, because I will show this thing to you. It's really awesome. It just came in FedEx today. Um, let's talk about some of our plans for the summer. As you are aware, because this involves all of you, okay? So as you are aware, uh, we've all been covid 19 -ing it. We've been just chilling in one spot, just like everybody else has. Uh, we're actually in um, my mother-in-law's and Leslie's mom's uh, driveway. We've been sitting here in Georgia for two months, I think, kind of deciding what we're going to do. You know, all the RV parks have been closed. We live in this RV. We do not have a house. This is our home. So having a plan and knowing where to go and all that kind of stuff, you know, everything got canceled. We were going to go to Nam, They got canceled. Uh, we had like five or six dates. I was going to go to the Formula One in Texas, Formula One race in Texas. We were going to do, uh, I wanted to go to a bicycle race in Utah. I mean, like there was a whole bunch of stuff I wanted to do this summer. And um, it, of course, it all got canceled. So we didn't have any plans. And so we were literally just going to sit here and just see what was going to go on. Well, then um, Texas Toast, uh, Matt from Texas Toast called me um, last weekend and said, hey, I'm doing a class the week of NAM, And what if you came out and hung out with us during the class? And then we got to talking and then this whole idea came up like he's doing all these modules like every day, like. You get to cut out a guitar, you get to, I don't know, I don't understand it totally, but I know that you, you, there's a couple things that are going to happen. You're going to be able to go physically to Texas Toast Guitars, and I know those are limited seats in uh, Colorado, right outside of Denver. You'll be able to go there and like build a guitar, and I know that they're selling those spots. I don't know if they're sold out or not. You can check with Texas Toast. But then the other thing he's going to do is he, every Sunday night, he does kind of what we do, actually not going to lie. I stole the idea from him. Every Sunday night, he does like an online course where you can literally like pay and be part of a class about building guitars, which is really cool. And he's the one that inspired my idea to have once a month, um, our class on Patreon. So, and we'll get into that later. Cause we're going to, that's another thing I want to update you on some new stuff about that. So anyway, he says, well, why don't you come out and teach some stuff about wiring and about pickup making and that kind of stuff. If you have all your stuff with you, why don't you come out? So, July 5th to the 12th, I will be in Denver, Colorado. And I will be at Texas Toast Guitars all week. And, oh, hey, Super Chats are fun. Did you know you, what? Oh, interesting. My wife just gave me five bucks. I'm not going to lie. That's pretty cool. Um, you can't comment unless you have a YouTube channel. I didn't know that. I didn't either. That's very interesting. So anyway, um, the long and the short of it is we'll be out there. We're going to be teaching part of the class. Uh, get with Texas Toast, and as soon as I know more about the particulars of it, I will share it with you also, but that's it's kind of like his thing, and he just invited me to be a part of it, so I don't know the details, but I do know that you will be able to buy an, a, a, an online-only version and like attend uh, online parts or I don't know how much of these classes. I'm not sure. So check out Texas Toast Guitars on YouTube. Um, I think they have an email list. As soon as I know more, I will tell you. 
but I know 100% for sure that I will be out there uh, doing it. So that's a, a pretty cool deal. Um, now, as far as our classes go at Dylan Talks Tone, we are doing um, these classes every fourth Sunday. Um, this was actually Leslie's idea uh, to pick the same Sunday every month. And she had another really good idea, kind of throwing me under the bus, but I think it's a great idea. What we're going to do is basically the way it works is you go to Patreon. There's a $45 level at Patreon. Once a month, we're going to do a class every fourth Sunday. We already did one. It was so fun. We already had a few people there. And we're literally spending an hour, hour and a half, two hours. I mean, it was almost two hours last time diving deep into guitar setup stuff. And the cool part about it is you can have your little thing there. We're using Zoom. Um, the paid version for security and all that kind of stuff. You'll be able to have your guitar there. You can hang out and you can do all this stuff um, and to with us. And you can say, hey, what, you know, what, am I doing it right? What's going on? We can work together. We can communicate. It's not like this. It's literally like back and forth. We get to chat. I get to see your stuff. You get to see my stuff. It's almost as good as being in person. It is awesome. Every fourth Sunday of the month, the fourth Sunday of May, we're going to talk about nuts and we're going to talk about making them. We're going to talk about cutting them. We're going to talk about all that stuff, nut files, how to test them, how to measure them, the things you do want, the things you don't want, all that stuff. We're going to dive into that. It's going to be awesome. The last one was about neck relief. Once you subscribe, as long as you are subscribed to this class, um, you will get access to the replays of all the ones that you missed in case you missed them. So if you just now join it, you'll get last month's too, which is really cool. The other thing is, is that when there is an extra Sunday, this was Leslie's idea, when there is an extra Sunday in the month, like in May, we're gonna do a bonus one. So you will get two classes instead of one for the same price. It's gonna be awesome. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, it, it's, I'm so excited, it's been super, super fun. It's been super fun. What are you, you all are talking about me over here. Leslie's not, it's been a long time since Leslie was in the comments. So, uh, what did somebody ask? Why don't you guys, why do you guys live in an RV? <laughs> because uh, we want to. Um, it's a blast. She'll explain to you more, but if, if you want to know why we live in an RV, you should share our other YouTube channel in the comments. We go really in depth, like from the moment we decided to sell our house, we stood in the driveway, we made a video and we're like, today we decided to sell our house and we like got super in depth about why and how and the whole process. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay. Oh, the other thing, when I go to Texas Toast Guitars in June, July, I will be bringing my 10th scale Axial Wraith Rock Crawler to race a belt sander. He will probably win because this thing's a rock crawler and it's actually not really made to race. It's a rock crawler. So there. All right. Let's discuss. Let's discuss. $300 guitar pickups versus $30 guitar pickups. Are expensive guitar pickups actually better than cheap ones? First of all, I personally believe, this is just an opinion, this humbucker right here is 139 bucks. This pickup right here is 159 bucks. There's no reason for a pickup to be $300 unless it is one of those weird Seymour Duncan ones made with silver wire. They're like $700. Is that worth it? I guess it depends on, you know, whether you think it's worth it or not. Um, do you know how McNelly Stagger Swagger pickups work? Um, we'll save that one for another day because I'm trying to get him to do a show with me. <laughs> 
We just haven't nailed down the date. Uh, I, I loved him. He's a great dude. And uh, we've been working on trying to nail down a date where we can get together and do a collaboration. And we've not gotten there yet. So, so the whole thing about cheap pickups is... Because people say, well, I can't tell the difference, or I've watched an A-B test video where I couldn't tell the difference. Obviously, you know how I feel about those. Um, you saw in the last video that we did where we used the Gretsch pickups and we turned them down and turned them up and they didn't do the thing that I wanted them to do. So there are performance differences between cheap pickups and expensive pickups. Is the cost justified from a $30 eBay pickup to, for example, a $130 single coil. A lot of people would say no, but there's a bunch of stuff that comes into play with this. And a lot of it doesn't have to do with the sound. The truth is, if you like a $30 pickup, then that's the pickup for you and you don't have to spend any more money. If you like it, that's it. What the most of this comes down to is cost of materials and economy of scale. And, well, we'll talk about economy of scale in a couple of different ways. A $30 pickup, typically, uh, these really cheap ones that come in like squires and stuff, I don't have any, I always throw them away. They can be made with basically no humans touching them, all with machines. So the economy of that scale is so huge, they can make thousands and thousands and thousands with, a, with no humans ever touching them, ever. That makes it really, really cheap. That is something that I cannot do. When we get into hand winding pickups and when we get into making everything by hand, and you've seen on the vlogs lately, especially this month and tomorrow and actually going into next week, you're gonna even see more stuff how much time and work goes into making a pickup. So there's obviously the time value uh, that I spend sitting here doing it, right? There's also the cost of the materials. And you're gonna say, well, yeah, but I, I know that you can buy the cost, of, the cost of a strat pickup materials is, let's say it's, you know, a roll of wire is 70 bucks and you can get so many pickups out of a roll of wire and you can, Go to Mojo Tone and you can buy a bobbin for $8 or $15, whatever they are. And then you can make that into a pickup. And, you know, you might have, let's say, $15, $20 into it. Why is it $139? This all goes, again, to economy of scale. There's a lot of people that will work out of their house. Now, obviously I'm working out of a motorhome, but there's a lot of people that'll work out of their house as a hobby with no aspirations of running a business and sell pickups for 40, 50 bucks and not make any money. But the bottom line is, is that if you're doing it to keep your lights on, there's a lot more costs involved and there's a lot more scale involved. And in order to keep it solvent, you have to spend a lot of money to make it happen. You have to spend more money to make it cheaper to make a pickup. And you have to build in that profit margin in order to survive so that you can spend more money so that you can make a pickup. It's this vicious circle. And that's really what it comes down to. Does a $300 pickup sound better than a $30 pickup? And I know for everybody that clicked on this video and was like, I want to hear a $30 pickup a bead with a $300 pickup and see if I can tell the difference. Chances are you won't be able to, or you would argue about it in the comments and some people would say one thing and some people would say another thing. But that's not what it's about. It's about how they're made. All these cheap pickups that you see, most of these cheap pickups that you see in all these $150, $200 guitars, or all this stuff you see on eBay, humans don't touch them. They're just made on a machine. They're molded on a machine. The magnets are pressed into them on a machine. They're wound on a machine. They're packaged on a machine. And then maybe they're put into a guitar by a person in a foreign country 
at a very low labor rate and therefore it's cheap. I have to source all my parts for this pickup from one, two, three, four, five different vendors, which means I have to maintain enough buying power to maintain those five different vendors. So like, for example, people have said, well, I can buy, I can buy all the parts and build a guitar in my house for 300 bucks. True, but you can't repeat that. You could buy some stuff on eBay, some cheap stuff on eBay, and you could do that. But to make a quality product, I have to be able to maintain uh, vendor relationships with five different companies just to make this one pickup, which means I have to spend X amount of dollars every year, order so many times, stock so much product, and all that sort of stuff, which means that I have to have maintain a level of business in order to be able to sell that stuff, which means I have to spend so much time on marketing, which means I have to make YouTube videos, which means I have to buy Facebook ads, which means I have to go to trade shows, which means all that cost built in, in order to maintain a particular volume. Plus, I mean, some of this has to make it through to pay my, you know, electric bill. So, uh, well, well, not necessarily an electric bill anymore, but bills. And so it all has to work together. And all of this stuff is, uh, it's all economy. I think a lot of people don't understand that part of it because they think they can go on eBay and buy parts for five bucks or 10 bucks or 15 bucks and make it in their garage. And of course, that's how we all started, but that's how every small business starts. That's how Starbucks started. That's how Barnes and Noble started. That's how uh, Apple started. Everybody started in a garage buying a few parts and then they realize, wait a minute, I needed to make more of these, which means I need to buy more of these, which means I need to build in a certain amount of profit so that I can maintain the inventory, which means, you know what I mean? And it just grows and grows and grows. And as you scale up, that's what happens. Fortunately, we've got it figured out to where it's really, really refined. And that is also why we don't make a ton of different pickups. We make one, two, three, four different humbuckers, two different P90s, two different tele pickups, two different, three different strap pickups, and two different mini humbuckers. And that's it. I don't make anything else. Um, we quit making cables, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, that's the thing. Dylan, can you recommend or make me a set of pickups for my seven string RG752? Dude, I totally can. I love making seven string pickups. Please shoot me an email, go to dylantalkstone.com and um, go to the little contact thing. Do me a favor, if you have one of these, measure your string spacing and measure the distance. If you're gonna do this, let me just show you how to do this. Measure the distance between the furthest, the center of the furthest screws on your humbucker. Like this one is 52 millimeters. Measure that on your seven string humbuckers so we make sure we get the right stuff and make sure I can get the right stuff before I commit to making those for you. Um, you really shouldn't have to explain all this, but thanks for being patient with those who don't. You know what it is? To me, it's, uh, it's part of being transparent about what we do so that when somebody orders a pickup and gets it in the mail, they know exactly what they got. And I have built this entire, well, all of my business, I've been in business for myself since I was 17 years old. And every business I've ever owned, and this one especially, when I literally put my name on it, I was like, we're not gonna sell snake oil. We're not gonna sell stuff that doesn't work. We're not gonna make stuff and tell somebody it's going to do something like this is going to cure cancer in your guitar. You know what I mean? Like none of that stuff. Like I don't do any of that junk. And part of that is the transparency. And one of the things, so I'll, I'll tell you, 
you you talked about this you, you mentioned this and i'm gonna just bring it up um mr larry perez you 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 brought this up so i'm gonna talk about it one of the things that i changed in the last six or seven months in my own head was i for a long time was worried that once people figured out that i was doing this stuff in my garage and that i didn't have like a big fancy whatever um that they're gonna be like oh he's not very professional and i was like screw it i don't care um they sound how they sound they're good i have nashville players playing them i have new york city players playing them i have la players playing them they're in studios they're on records it doesn't matter i don't care the stuff is good and it's not just about the pickup that goes in the guitar it's it's the entire experience like and my thing is the knowledge thing that's why i'm so passionate about this um the education side like going to uh going to colorado and doing this thing and doing this thing on the fourth sunday of every month and the fifth sunday bonus things that's why i'm super stoked about it because you don't just get these you know what i mean it's like i want everybody to be able to even if you don't buy from me, I want you to take what you get from this channel and what we do and be like, you know what? Even when I go buy some Seymour Duncans and I read what it says right there and what it says it's supposed to do, I, I know what's really going on. Like, we're not like conspiracy theorists or anything, but I'm just saying you, you, you know what's really going on and I, I want people to know that. And I think that's super, super cool. I, I want that to happen. Um, let's see. I heard you say in a previous video that the pickups you're the most proud of and make better than anybody else are P90s. What sets here is a part? Um, I do not know. I'm just going to tell you, I do not know. Because I make them the way, and this is the only pickup I really do this for. I literally just make them and I make them the same way every time and I use the same parts every time and everybody loves them. Not one person has said, actually, ever with any of my pickups, not one person has sent it back and said, this sucks. I don't want it. Um, no, not one person has ever sent one back or, you know, wanted that. I did have designing a set for a guy one time for a line of guitars we had some back and forth trying to get one right but i don't know i don't know why they're good i just know that i the way i wind them and they just work and i'll tell you exactly what how they work what's good about them first of all when you turn them all the way to 10 i, I will ship to uh, germany for 30 bucks um when you turn everything all the way to 10 with my P90s, they sound exactly like a 59 Les Paul Jr., period. But what with a really honky mid-range, like a properly good, snarly mid-range, they're way better, they're pow way more powerful than any humbucker of the same period. When you turn them down to 8, 7, 6, uh, don't use a volume mod on them, don't use a any kind of tone bleed when you turn them down a little bit the highs get shaved off just a little they warm up that mid-range poke starts to come down they're just they're really multi-dimensional um for a p90 and then the other thing that's really good about them is especially in the neck position they never get muddy p gibson p90s are notorious for being really muddy and flat sounding in the neck pickup. And when you turn them down, especially, they just really lose any kind of clarity. Um, and that's why I don't like them. So that's what we did. Um, yeah. I like what this guy says because I like his name. If your product is solid, that's all that matters. Does not matter if it was made in a cardboard shack. And his name is Step Van Joe. So I like your youtube name that's awesome um 
Yeah, man. Yeah, they moved on uh, Masters to December, uh, November. So cool. Um, if I was to use just one pickup on my Stratocaster and one volume, no tone, what would you recommend? Uh, it depends what kind of music you want to play, dude. Uh, one of our center punches or one of our eight balls and put a coil split on it. That's what I would do. It would be super versatile. Uh, side point. I always say every person should at least for a time, if not all the time, own one guitar with only one pickup in it. That is like my personal belief. So an Esquire or a Junior or something with one pickup in it with a volume and a tone and that's it. Because I think it makes you a better guitar player. And I think it teaches you what the guitar is supposed to do. And the volume, using your volume knob and using your tone knob and really getting more out of the guitar, being limited to that one bridge pickup, I think it teaches you a lot. Yeah, man. Do you like your motorhome more than your old house? For the capability, I would say. Leslie says for the capability of what we're able to do now, absolutely. I agree. Um, do we? Oh, we do. Done. You're fixed. Sorry, hang on. Let me handle this. Uh, let me handle this person really quick. Excellent. Every once in a while you get somebody. Uh, did you learn winding pickups by just doing it or did someone teach you? Um, I... So the electronic side of everything, um, I've been doing ever since I was a little kid. My dad um, is a jazz guitar player and we owned a guitar store when I was really, really small. I mean, I was like wrapping up cables and doing all kind of stuff. Um, in a guitar store since I was a little kid and um, then when I got into school age I went to school for electronics and then I repaired consumer electronics when I was younger like in my late teens and then I kind of got out of it um, and did a bu bunch of mechanical engineering and designing for a long time and then came back to music. Um, the short answer is I taught myself, but this is not something I taught myself like in the last couple years. This is, I've been doing this for a long time since I was a little kid. Um, I knew how to solder when I was a little kid. Like, I mean, I've been doing this junk for a long, long time. Yeah. So anyway, oh yeah, it's 543. I guess we're about, uh, we use A5s. Uh, we use A5s in our uh, P90s. How come no guitars come with three P90s? Uh, there's a SG that comes with one, the dude, the blues dude. Um, I'm planning on buying this lizard spit fret polish. Will I need to crown the frets after sanding them? No, it's a polish. It will not. No, you'll be fine. Just use it. It's awesome. Cool. You guys, this has been really fun. Make sure you check it out. Uh, the class over on Patreon. That would be really cool. Um, make sure you check out our other YouTube channel. You get to know a little bit more of the backstory. Um, one of these days I'll get her to come sit over here with me and we'll actually be able to do this again. Um, we used to sit together and do it, but you know, Gary Clark Jr. That's who I was trying to think of. Yeah, man. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out and I uh, hope everybody has a good week. Uh, I will actually see you tomorrow in a video that I already edited and uploaded. I'll just turn it on tomorrow morning and you'll see that. And, uh, make sure you go check out Texas Toast Guitars because they will tell us when, uh, <laughs> 
two dollar super chat just because somebody had to dude thank you so much i appreciate it um and i'll keep you in touch on everything there is to know and uh that's it i appreciate it thanks everybody thanks for the super chats thanks for all the support this has been really fun again and uh i guess we'll see you tomorrow <laughs>